This is rental car number 69, and today I'm driving the 2018 Nissan Rogue SV with all-wheel drive. This is a compact sport utility vehicle that retails for about $27,000. There are so many of these small SUVs on the market right now that I think it's really important to talk about price. So let's quickly go through all the trim levels for the Nissan Rogue. So the base model is the S trim level. With all-wheel drive, it comes in at about $26,000. The one I'm driving today is the SV, and that comes in at about $27,000. But you can upgrade that to the Midnight Edition for about $28,000. Or you can go crazy and drop about thirty-three dollars on the SL model. Or you can go a little cheaper and get the Rogue Sport, which is considered a totally separate model and is about $3,000 less across the board. The point I'm trying to make is that you have a bunch of different options with the Rogue. You can go as low as about $22,000, and then you can go all the way up to about thirty-six, dollars depending on what kind of options you want to add to the vehicle. All right, but enough with the numbers. Let's jump back into the 2018 Nissan Rogue SV that we have today. Let's pop that hood and take a look at what's underneath. So this Nissan Rogue comes with a 2.5-liter 16-valve four-cylinder engine. This is Nissan's continuously variable speed automatic. Kicks out about 140 horsepower, and you get some decent fuel economy with the Rogue. 26 miles per gallon in the city, 33 miles per gallon on the highway, with a 14.5-gallon tank. So what does that all really mean? Well, you're driving a four-cylinder engine, so your speed is not going to be great. You can go 0 to 60 in about 9.1 seconds. Now, that's pretty slow, but it, it didn't really bother me. I was able to keep up with traffic very easily, and, you know, getting on and off the highway was no problem at all. I also mentioned that this is a continuously variable speed automatic, and in layman's terms, what that means is you're not going to get those jerky motions when you're shifting through the gears. It's really smooth throughout, so when you do accelerate onto the highway, uh, it feels really nice. In other words, this is a very comfortable car to drive in, but you're not going to be the fastest car on the road. If that's what you're looking for, well, you're probably not shopping for a small SUV anyway. So let's keep that theme of comfort, and what you do get with the Rogue is blindside detection. I'm pointing to it right now. There are these little lights that are right inside the door that illuminate when a car is in your blind spot. Watch it sort of blink right now. I know that not everyone is a fan of these, but I like any attempt to make these cars safer. My favorite feature is, if someone's in your blind spot, you turn on your turn signal, the light flashes, and you get a blinking noise in the cabin just to give you that extra notification that, hey, maybe you should be paying better attention. You know, I drive about 15 to 16 hours a week. I'm on the road a lot, so any help to keep me focused is appreciated. All right, so that's a little bit about driving this car. Uh, let's take a look inside and see what kind of features the Rogue has to offer. So the Rogue does have keyless entry. That means you can just press this button and open the door without taking the key fob out of your pocket. And then once you're inside, I think you'll agree that this comes with a nice cloth interior. Doesn't attract dirt very much. Uh, this car was actually pretty clean, which is a rarity for some of the rentals I've had lately. You also get Nissan's standard key fob. It's this oval shape with four buttons on the front, nothing really on the back. This top button is a remote start feature, which is super helpful now that it's cold outside. And it is a push button start, so you just got to push this uh, round button right here to the right of the steering wheel, and the car starts right up. And here's that steering wheel. Got a number of buttons on here. To the left hand side, you got your volume rocker along with some buttons to navigate through some of the entertainment features on the vehicle. On the right hand side you have your cruise controls and your phone activation buttons. And then up top you get a really nice gauge cluster with a huge display right in the center. In my opinion Nissan has the best displays in their gauge clusters out of any car out there. They're big, they're colorful, they're chock full of menus that you can interact with. Really, I love these quite a bit. Please don't be fooled by the poor shot that my camera is getting of this. This really is a bright and crisp display. Best out there. Trust me. And then shifting over to the left of the steering wheel, you have all your standard buttons here. You have your window controls. Your door locks are a little bit further up from there. You also have your mirror controls right here. 
nice sort of panel of controls right here to activate all kinds of things like the trunk release, the uh, fuel door release, switching on and off all-wheel drive, eco mode, sport mode, it's all right here, easy to reach. And then all the way at the bottom, I'm not sure if you can see, but you do get a push pedal parking brake. All right, so let's shift our focus to the right of the steering wheel and let's look up. There are two small lights up here to illuminate the cabin. And then you also get a rather large uh, sunglass holder right here with just a little bit of padding to keep everything safe. And then if you'll notice, the rear view mirror has no buttons or switches of any kind on it. It's just a crisp, clean mirror. And then at the top of the center console, you get your hazard lights buttons along with two large vents. And then below there, you get a very large touch screen. This is okay. Um, the colors are nice. It's a little bit dark for my taste. I do like that there are dedicated buttons on the left and right of the screen, but I don't like how everything is organized. I like it when there's one main screen with large icons for you to quickly navigate through all the menu structures. You don't really have this here, so it takes, well, it takes a few minutes of getting used to, but after you get the hang of it, really it's no big deal to navigate to all the settings that you're looking for. And below the touchscreen are your climate controls. I'm a big fan of these. Nice big dials to uh, control everything. Digital readouts to show you exactly what the temperature is in the vehicle. And then all your standard buttons right there, easy to reach while you're driving the car. Uh, really, Nissan has done a great job with this. And then all the way at the bottom, you get a nice storage area right here with a couple of power ports. A DC power port all the way on the right-hand side. You get a USB port and an audio out jack on the left. And it's big enough to hold your cell phone, though it is a little inconvenient because you do have to reach around that gear shift to get access to it. And then speaking of the gear shift, here it is. Nothing special here. It works fine. You get a sport mode, so you can shift the gears if you want to take control. But otherwise, this works great. No complaints. Behind there, you get two nice size cup holders. Pretty simple. They work fine. And then below, well, not below, but behind there, you get your uh, heated seat controls. These actually warm up pretty quickly. And then in the center, you get a nice sort of storage cutout that I found pretty perfect to uh, store my cell phone while I was driving. And then your center armrest does have a standard storage space underneath. Nothing really special here. There is a, a DC power port in here, along with a USB port for you to charge all your gadgets. There's nothing else really worth noting in here. The same is true with the glove box. It's a decent size, plenty of room to store your registration, owner's manuals, all that good stuff, but nothing really exciting to talk about. All right, so that's all the highlights of the front seat. Let's uh, jump in the back and take a look at what kind of amenities your passengers are going to get to experience. All right, so first off, legroom, pretty decent. I'm six feet tall, no problems here. Even with that driver's seat pushed back a pretty good distance. Beyond that, though, there's nothing really special back here. I was disappointed to see there are no USB or power ports on the back of that center armrest for your front seat. It's just kind of a blank piece of plastic there. The center armrest is also a, well, a little bit underwhelming. Let me show you how much of an idiot I am. I had to struggle quite a bit just to be able to figure out how to get this thing to fold down. I thought you just pulled on that tab right there, but that didn't work. So I struggled for a bit, but I eventually figured it out. And as you'll see, there's just two cup holders right here. I was a little disappointed there's not a storage space here, or at least a little slot for someone to store their cell phone. But hey, it's just a center armrest, so uh, I guess I really shouldn't be complaining. All right, so not a whole lot of excitement to talk about for your rear passengers, but this car does have a great deal of cargo space. So let's look at the very back and see what the Rogue has to offer. So first off, there's a pretty decent amount of space back here, so I don't think you're going to have any issues hauling and storing things in the back of this vehicle. Nissan has kept their shelving system back here. It's made out of sort of lightweight styrofoam feeling shelves that I've played around with a ton, both in the 2018 and the 2017, and I've never really been able to find a, a way to set these up that I found useful. But I guess it's interesting to see that there are options back here, so you can convert the space a number of ways to try and fit your needs. And then on the right-hand side, all the way towards the floor, let's get that shadow out of the way, you do get a DC power port hidden back here, so you can plug in some toys. And uh, speaking of electronics, you do get a button right here on the bottom of the door. Oh, didn't film that well. But anyway, hit that button, 
and the rear hatch will close automatically for you. All right, so that's all the major highlights of the 2018 Nissan Rogue SV. Drove this car for about two days. I think I put about 180 miles on it, and um, I was really satisfied. I would gladly rent this car again. Didn't blow me away, but it was pretty fun to drive. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to give this one four stars. I mean, I really like the Rogue. It's a decent car, comes with a lot of nice features. It's really comfortable to drive. But I'm not going to give it five stars because I think there's still a little bit of room for improvement to bring it up to the level of one of my favorite small SUVs, the Ford Edge. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time when I rent my 70th rental car. I'll see you then. Thank you for